Hey guys, hi, this is Radha Krishna. Welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to talk about tomorrow's launch that is the launch on November 26th. ISRO is launching PSLV C54 and some satellites with it. So every launch, all of you guys see on TV, launch trajectory, the rocket, you know, flying in the sky. But most of us don't know what satellites are being launched, what those satellites do, how are the applications again connecting back to Indian citizens, etc. So in this video, we're going to talk about that. So agar if people want to know about the launch, what we do, we go on internet, type uh, tomorrow's launch ISRO will give us a document and there is stuff on the document that we can go through so this is the talk document PSLV C54 ka technical specifications and all and uh, most of these specifications are anyways covered on TV uh, ki how the rocket is going to be there what is the trajectory what is the timeline different stages of the rocket etc and etc but in this video we're going to talk about satellites so what are the satellites that uh, tomorrow's launch is going to you know launch into orbit we have EOS 06 which is the major payload we have INS2B we have Anand and Thaibolt which are uh, satellites that are made by private companies of India right and then there is Astrosat so Astrocast sorry so we're going to talk about E06 um, majorly so what this satellite is basically it's Oceansat 3 so this is another version of an already existing satellite that we have got and there are different payloads inside that satellite we're going to talk about the utilization of this payload what these payloads do exactly okay so we have four payloads here ocean column monitor sea surface temperature monitor KU band scatterometer and Argos Obviously Argos is a French payload, so the top three are made by ISRO, right? So let's get into ocean color monitor and what it is, right? So to understand that, we, ju we just need to type what is ocean color monitor on Google and it will provide us with a document. So this is a document that was made by ISRO for an older version of this satellite and uh, tomorrow's satellite is an upgrade for that particular um, payload of ocean color monitor so we're going to have multiple bands in that ocean color monitor so it is like a camera so imagine you have a DSLR your DSLR is going when you click a picture it's going to capture three different bands red green and blue and it will attach those three bands to make you a color image whereas this sensor has 13 different bands right your DSLR has three bands this sensor has 13 different bands and what this sensor does it majorly operates on earth it sees what earth is doing at different points of time right and at different orbits so these are satellites that are revolving around earth completely right so these uh, satellites see um, each part of earth correct and these cameras also see each part of earth and they image earth in different bands so why are these bands useful right so for example when a dslr captures your picture your color comes out as a parameter correct um, so that the color can be constructed in you know photo and you can see your your face or whatever you are imaging when this camera is imaging earth in different bands the bands are blocks across the electromagnetic spectrum so there are bands in red green blue near infrared short wave infrared as we go on in the spectrum so they provide information about the electromagnetic radiation that is coming from earth in various spectrums okay and different phenomenon on earth have different radiation signatures okay so by observing those radiation signatures we can come to certain sort of conclusion that okay this phenomenon might be happening okay if all of this is sounding very complex to you let us go down and see some of four parameters that they can derive obviously there will be multiple parameters some of the products that can be derived are given here so for example chlorophyll concentration can be derived from this satellite data so what can chlorophyll concentration in oceans give you it can give you the distribution of let's say photosynthesis that is happening in the ocean right so algae or whatever um, you know uh, photosynthesis you know deriving plants are there on the ocean surface uh, that concentration distribution can be given by the satellite data and where we can use this, a direct application that I can think of is distribution. When the nutrients are distributed, there's going to be fish there, right? So somehow we can link this data to fish distribution, right? And fishermen can use this data. So people can process this data and 
provide a probability that fish can be more in this region than in this region. So this is a direct application that I think okay, I can think of this parameter. Then uh, the second parameter is vertical diffuse attenuation coefficient. So this is um, a parameter that gives you how much depth um, the light can go through um, in that water, right? So um, this actually is correlated to water turbidity. So if you're studying about water turbidity, this is a parameter that can be derived out of the satellite data. And then total suspended matter is something that, you know, uh, directly gives you uh, amount of non-dissolved solids or particulate matter that are present in a column of water that can be, you know, derived from the satellite and aerosol optical depth. It's a, um, you know, distribution of aerosols in a column of air over the ocean surface. So it is also giving a distribution of aerosols in the atmosphere over the ocean, over the ocean surface. So these are some examples of uh, a single sensor that, uh, you know, is there on board on EOS 06. So we've covered ocean color monitor. Now let's go into the next sensor that is sea surface temperature monitor. So how this works, right? So generally, um, all of us around all bodies around us also have certain sort of temperature inside them, right? Some heat, even other walls, this mic, everything have certain temperature because things around us have some heat. The main source of heat uh, on earth is two things. One thing is sun. Sun is providing us, uh, you know, energy and there is also geothermal energy that is there. So processes inside earth are also um, generating energy. And every body which has certain temperature or which has certain internal energy emits a radiation, okay? And that radiation is uh, spread across electromagnetic wave spectrum. So most of the bodies on earth have a certain, you know, on an average have a certain band of temperature. So the temperatures are between this and this, this and this, right? So oceans also have a certain temperature range, okay? And that means oceans almost always emit radiation in this particular band wavelength okay and if you are measuring your radiation that is coming in those bands then you can you know correlate that radiation to the temperature of the ocean that is existing on earth okay and thereby you can find out which parts of ocean has um, higher temperature which parts of ocean have lower temperature thereby also somehow directly correlate to density of the water or the water waves etc so there's lots of ocean studies that can you know come into play from here so these bands are called as thermal infrared bands because these infrared the, the wave the radiation is an in infrared but what you can derive from that is thermal properties of the matter on earth so we give the name of thermal infrared so the sea surface temperature monitor has those band cameras so when it observes earth in those bands it gets electromagnetic waves from those you know spectrum and it can we can do processing and calculate a certain brightness temperature or a surface temperature of those bodies and that is almost directly correlated to actual temperature of that body right so that is something that we can derive from that uh, sensor then there is scatterometer scatterometer is a really really interesting sensor because um, it uh, measures uh, you know the radio waves um, that are reflected from the surface and um, an interesting application of this is because of uh, the radio waves that are reflected if there is a lot of wind on oceans the radio waves are reflected directly back to us like for example if the ocean is still and there is no wind if the radio waves are coming like this right the radio waves are reflected in another direction they do not go to satellite but if it is having some waves if radiation is coming if there, there is wave like this the uh, reflection again goes back to satellite so based on the amount of reflection and the texture of the ocean and the waves we can actually predict what is the wind velocity wind direction on the ocean right so this is a really really interesting application and what you will be able to see and appreciate is the products that come out of the satellite they measure wind velocity and direction from the waves that are there on the ocean so 
this is one more application that um, this tomorrow satellite will be providing us so this is a very interesting launch a la la larger community of uh, uh, ocean researchers are waiting for this so let's see how the data is going to be there so after the satellite is launched and the data is made public to all the community i will also be showing you all these products um, if you like this video please share and subscribe and also um, if you are interested in this stuff keep following me thank you guys bye